it is finally time to get the Dwarf 5K from Tiny Wood Stoves installed into the bus. Welcome to the Hippie Geeks and our Schooly Conversion Soul the Sun Chaser. Let's dig into this project. To be honest, we installed the stove six months ago and I just haven't gotten around to making a video about it until now. I was rushing to get it installed before the rain and cold weather hit and I wasn't able to record the end of the project because of the rain. With all of that said, let's take a look at how the process worked out for us. This is not going to be the permanent install for the stove, just something to get us through the winter as we are sleeping on the bus now and with all these windows, it's going to get pretty cold. We decided that we wanted to mount it on this old butcher block that Lindsay has had for a while now, but as it is too tall to use, we need to cut the legs down 8 inches or so. The legs are just friction fit into the butcher block itself, so a hammer and a chisel makes quick work of getting all four of the legs separated. After removing them, it was pretty easy to get them measured and cut off. You can see that I really need to replace the blade on my chop saw, though it did make it through all of them without much trouble. Once they were all cut, I put them back into the butcher block with a rubber mallet and then sanded the bottom smooth. Next up, we needed to add a metal plate onto the top of the butcher block and we decided to reuse part of the siding that we had removed from the walls of the bus all the way back in chapter 16. I cut off the rough edges all the way around, which ended up leaving us just enough to cover the top. A couple of nails around the outside secured it to the butcher block, then I carried the heavy bugger up into the bus and moved on to the next step. Now that the butcher block was in the bus, I could put the stove on top of it and figure out where I needed to cut the hole for our stovepipe. Once the stove was set in place, I put the adapter on the stove and then a super bright light inside of it shining up. This showed me what part of the ceiling was directly below the stove. As you can see, it is an oblong as it shines on the ceiling, but I used that light to find the center point of where the light was shining, and then took the enormous step of drilling up and through the roof of the bus. Out on the roof, I stuck a pencil in the hole and used that to hold the end of my tape measure so that I could mark a circle around the center point. Now, the stovepipe internal diameter is 5 inches for a single wall version that you can use right next to the stove. However, when penetrating the ceiling, you need to use double wall stovepipe to bring down the temperature of the metal that will be touching the boot. This also keeps the exhaust gases hot so you get a good draft to allow the stove to burn properly. However, double wall insulated pipe adds an additional inch around the entire pipe, bringing its diameter up to 7 inches. I have seen a lot of folks just cut the hole to be slightly larger than the stovepipe. Do not do that. You need a 1 to 2 inch gap between the double wall pipe to any combustible material, which in this case is our spray foam insulation and eventually the wood ceiling. Yes, that means that I'm cutting an 11 inch diameter hole into the top of our bus. The stovepipe bracket will be able to span that width though, and the pipe boot is still able to cover it. If you do not leave enough space, the heat from the pipe can cause a flash fire over time, and you do not want to see that happen. With the circle marked out, I drilled another hole right on the edge, which allowed me to get a jigsaw blade put in there so that I could cut it all out. You can see that I have a sheet hung underneath the hole, which was able to catch any metal shavings or foam that fell during the cutting process. That made cleanup super fast, and I was able to move on to installing the stovepipe pretty quickly. We cut a 6 inch section of single wall pipe to go onto the stove, and smeared the end with stovepipe cement. It didn't really want to go, but with a little rubber mallet persuasion, it popped in, which then let us get the double wall adapter installed. We connected everything together with the clamps we bought from Tiny Wood Stove and then moved to the outside of the bus again. As we don't have an interior ceiling yet, I needed to install the stovepipe bracket on the outside of the roof. The edges of the bracket would have stuck out from under the pipe boot, so I cut them off with the angle grinder so they would fit underneath. I put the bracket on the stovepipe and then screwed it into the roof and covered the screw heads with lap sealant. I tightened down the bolts that held it to the stovepipe and moved on to putting on the pipe boot. I was really rushing at this point. I could see the rain coming and I really needed to get it done before it drenched me. However, at this point the sky started to open up and I had to pull my camera into the garage and then get back up on the ladder to get this finished. Happily, the burst of rain didn't last very long, but I didn't pull the camera back out and just got it done. 
As I do not have any footage of that, let's look up there after six months of heavy use this winter. Wow. Take a look at that lap sealant around the pipe boot. That started six months ago, a pristine white, and it is really, really gray now. You can see the storm collar that goes right above the pipe boot, and then the cap at the top of the pipe. Thankfully, we have not had a single leak all winter, which we are pretty happy about. Looking at the stove from inside the bus, and you can see the large air gap that we left around the stovepipe. You can also see all of the screws poking through that we put into the pipe boot, though those will be hidden when we eventually finish the ceiling. Panning down from there, and you can see that we used another section of metal from the walls for our heat shield between the stove and the window. It also shows just how short our length of stovepipe really is. We have six inches of the single wall pipe, followed by six inches of the double wall adapter, then 40 inches of double wall pipe, and finally the cap. That gives us a total stovepipe length of about 52 inches, which is the absolute bare minimum I would think of going with. With this short of a pipe, the stove can be a bit touchy on startup, and until the pipe gets warmed up with a nice bed of coals, every time you open the door, a bit of smoke will blow into the bus. That is our fault completely, and we know it. In the final placement of the stove, we are going to drop it down another 40 inches and add another section of double wall stovepipe, which should work out a lot better for us. We have loved having the Dwarf 5K from Tiny Wood Stoves in the bus, and even though we still have all of our windows, it was able to keep us nice and toasty all winter long. We will be doing another proper install video in the future when we permanently mount the wood stove, but this has worked for us so far and we couldn't be happier. If this is your first time here visiting Soul the Sun Chaser, it would be wonderful to have you subscribe. This channel is all about our schooly journey, the good, the bad, and everything in between. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and check out our Patreon page or merch store to support the channel directly. Until next time, keep seeking adventure, chasing the sun.